my buddy Philip has been pretty active on YouTube and pretty recently TikTok is blowing up. I want to hear a little bit of his story. See what he's doing, see how he's doing it and how he's pushing the needle. Bouncing this house. Oh, welcome to the studio. We, we play this little game, my wife and I, whenever we see oh. a cat on the street, the first one to say nickel gets a point. <laughs> You're gonna get this. Everybody this is how it look pretty, y'all. Uh, what's up, guys? Today we're here with Philip Lemoyne, and he's gonna show us all about some of the fun things he's been doing on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. So today I actually am gonna walk you through my whole process of shooting cooking content here in my home. So today we made a panko crusted salmon, and um, we'll show you how it went down. <laughs> Trying to see which one has like the prettiest like profile, you know? Oh! <laughs> so today we're gonna be running two different cameras, mainly filming on this one. And this is just a Sony a6400. And then on it, I have a 35 millimeter 1.8. And that's going over to this small HD. Uh, what's unique about it today is I have it mounted vertically. I'm just shooting content for Instagram. Up here, I got a ZV-1. This is a new camera that's picked up. I really love it. And this is just gonna shoot an overhead shot. I'm gonna use it to get a shot of the ingredients that we're gonna be cooking with today. And then I'm gonna move it out of the way, switch over to this camera. It's gonna film all of the cooking stuff. And I'm gonna swap it back to this camera to just get like an overhead shot of the finished plated dish. Yeah, today should actually go pretty quick. For the lights, I'm actually running the Practilite 602. I wouldn't recommend it for cooking videos, but it's just what I have because I shoot wedding videos and uh, they have a pro photo mount so I could easily just just throw that huge, I think it's like a 90 centimeter softbox that's kind of getting light towards me here. It's running at 5,000 Kelvin. I got a 5,000 Kelvin light bulb in here. And then here's another 602, but that way it makes it just easy for me to just punch in the white balance on both of the cameras and kind of get close to what I'm looking for. But you'll see how this one works in a little bit. This is gonna be my cooking light. This is actually a campaign that I'm doing with Foodland. It's called their Foodland 5. It's recipes with less than five ingredients. So I'm gonna highlight the ingredients here. We even got some food then, uh, makai ingredients that I wanna sh showcase. Once I shoot the video of the ingredients, I'm then gonna prep everything, but I don't need to film any of that getting prepped. I'm just gonna get it ready so when it is time to film like the actual recipe process, it's just gonna be like, this goes there, this goes there. It's gonna go really quick. I'm gonna put the panko mix together, put it on top of the salmon. I'm gonna sear the salmon four minutes. And then after that, I'm gonna throw it in the oven for about five to seven minutes. I'm gonna plate it. Maybe we'll do a little nee. I kinda like it just like that. Take a top-down photo. I'm gonna move this whole thing, we'll just shift and turn. And I'm gonna take some other photos so that they can share um, on their social. And then you guys can eat. <laughs> I don't know why I'm smiling, my face isn't on camera. <laughs> See, this is a cutting board from Andrew Tran. We overused it and I don't want to throw it out, so I actually repurposed it for this turntable shot. It's actually a lot easier to rotate the dish than it is to like swing your camera around it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm worried that when the robots take over the world, like they're awesome. gonna remember like, oh, Philip was good to us. <laughs> Philip was polite. Man, go crushed salmon. I don't know why I just, I feel like I, that was very racist towards robots, you know what I mean? Robots don't talk like that now, you know what I mean? You started off making skateboard videos, surf videos, weddings, and then now you're doing some YouTube stuff. Yeah, what had happened was, we started traveling a little bit, started watching a lot of YouTube channels with these little travel vloggers. And I was like, how the hell do they travel for a living? That's crazy. And I found out that they make passive income. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna look into this. Fast forward, I started a YouTube channel, not knowing what I wanted to do. And remember, we were all trying to figure it out yeah. too. Like, yeah, so I was just doing anything. And then at the end of 2019, my YouTube channel blew up. I hit a thousand subscribers and I was like, what the hell, what's going on? and it was my cooking videos that was doing good. I just decided to go all in on the cooking side because I enjoy it. I mean, I do it every day. We, we cook almost all of our meals and I was like, well, I'll just film it and put it on YouTube. <laughs> There's a few times when I was like shooting for other wedding companies and then like after the ceremony, I'm like, oh, so how often am I supposed to format my car? No. What? <laughs> from, from the sense of being a filmmaker, going to this opposite end of like having to set up those same ideas that you usually use your eyes and your senses to shoot. You're now having to rethink yeah. a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. and stage it so that the shots that you imagine come out when you're not even looking at them. Mm -hmm. how, how do you 
change the direction of your creativity to make that? Honestly, if it wasn't for the wedding industry, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I'll just put that out there. Weddings really help me think on your feet, you know what I mean? And because of that, you don't really have control of what's happening. So you actually almost have to premeditate what's gonna happen and pre-sequence everything, right? And then what do I need to film to kind of tell that, to give those instructions to the people that are watching, right? And also editing this content really helped me realize what I don't need and what I do need. I would be peeling like 20 carrots and I'd have like 20 minutes of carrot footage. That I, when I edited that, I just showed like four shots of it, moved the camera, three more peels and that's it. In this video, I actually got to, in this video I partnered with, uh, no, so this is a partnership with Foodland. In this video, I'm super stoked to be able to partner with Foodland for their Foodland 5. That, you know, when you think about client work, you gotta think about who is their demographic, who, who are the people that they're trying to target, right? And this is gonna be like the home cook or like, but you know what I mean? It's gonna be that person that after work, I need to grab something and I wanna cook it quick for my family. I just need an easy, simple recipe that tastes delicious. And this is one of them. So I was thinking about their demographic when I was creating this dish too. I didn't wanna make something super over the top. See, it's not like browning it, it's like- Burning? Burning it. So I'm just gonna, just kinda like kiss it. <laughs> My other question for you is, this is a huge change in direction and part of that pivot requires a little bit of pain, um, a lot of it rethinking of what you do, why you do it. There's a lot of people that want to do this. How do you go all in? Like, How do you change directions like that? You know what's funny is a lot of people are already doing it. It's not so much about going all in, it's more about believing that you can. So many times people just don't believe that they can actually get paid to do something that they genuinely enjoy doing. Anyone can do it. You can work a real job and then when you make your food, you can just film it, edit it, and put it out there and, and slowly build your portfolio and your videos. You really just have to do it. And that's all I did. I was just like, you know what, I think I'm gonna do this. And every time I did something, I just learned. And I don't even wanna show people like, this is how to do it. It's more of like, this is how I'm doing it. And I'm just trying to figure it out. Here's what I'm doing, here's how I do it. And then hopefully it helps them get some more shortcuts in the process of not having to like find out, run into all those failures, you know? Well, that was a ton of fun. Thanks, Philip, for the invite, for the delicious food. Really inspiring to watch you continue to grow on TikTok, on YouTube, and all the different social channels that you're on. Be sure to stay tuned for some new features coming up with some more of our friends. We'll catch you later. Aloha.